Hello guys, welcome back sa ating channel. So today we are going to discuss uh, the uh, subject a forensic uh, lie detection techniques, no? So uh, formerly na sa amin, uh, we have this subject, same subject and we called it the subject polygraphy on the old curriculum. So today in the new curriculum, it is now entitled forensic lie detection techniques, no? So uh, here are the topics, no? Ito pa yung mga topic na pag-uusapan natin. We have at least five of them, no? We have here number one topic for today. We will be talking about what is about polygraphy. Uh, number two, we are going to discuss what are the components of the uh, polygraph. No? And then number three, we are going to discuss also some of the major questions or types of questions being asked during the conduct of polygraph examination. And number four, we have here the different types of polygraph tests. No, we are just going to talk about uh, some of the techniques or some of the classic types of uh, uh, polygraph tests that is being conducted. And we are going to talk about the polygraph testing itself, specifically the different phases that we will encounter when we will conduct a polygraph examination. So uh, those are the things that uh, we are going to be discussing. Let's uh, get into our discussion. So the first thing that we will discuss is all about polygraphy. No? A polygraph, no? uh, sometimes uh, they are used interchangeably with the term polygraphy. No? Uh, ito po yung tinatawag nating lie detector. No? Uh, the polygraph that refers to the machine. No? It refers to any kind of similar machine that can measure then record the physiological indices. So, how does a polygraph work? Just uh, an overview. No? Tignan natin kung... Uh, may paliwanag natin kung paano gumagana yung polygraph uh, machine. Okay? So, polygraph machine records the so-called physiological uh, changes that occurs into our body when we are subjected to a certain stimuli. No? So, those stimuli are the different types of questions that are being asked during the conduct of examination. So, while we are answering the, these different types of question, there are expected body changes in uh, the, the, there are expected uh, physiological changes in our body in terms of uh, the, the following no? uh, changes in the pulse rate, changes in the respiration, changes in the blood pressure, and changes in our skin conductivity no? when we are uh, answering those questions that are being asked to us during the conduct of a polygraph examination. So these changes are actually part of the so-called involuntary changes that appears in our body. So meaning uh, that the subject of the polygraph examination hindi niya po controlled yung mga changes na ito. Okay? And when we are asked a specific type of question that uh, somewhat have uh, or instill to us uh, fear or uh, uh, doubt, something like that, magkakaroon po tayo ng mga changes dito sa mga binanggit natin. And those things, or those changes are being recorded into the machine and later on be interpreted by the polygraph examiner or siya yun po yung tinatawag nating lie detector. No? Meron po tayong notion dito. Meron tayong, uh, meron tayong pinapaniwalaan that polygraph machine is not actually a lie detector. No? Hindi po siya lie detector. It only records the different changes that transpire in our body when we are subjected to uh, stimuli. Okay? So, yun po yung nangyayari. Ang lie detector po is the examiner who interprets these different uh, uh, recordings, these different changes no? as uh, recorded by the polygraph machine. And he will be the one who will uh, decide whether the subject is being truthful or is lying. So, ganun po yung process or ganun po yung uh, uh, concept, kumbaga, ng polygraph examination. Okay? Now, let's talk about the different components. Kasi po nasabi natin, di ba, it records the different changes into our body. Actually, the term polygraph machine came from the two word poly which means many and grapos which means writing no? 
uh, it denotes that its actual meaning is uh, something like many writings. No? Bakit po siya many writings? Because uh, it records uh, a lot of tracing. No? It records a lot of tracing that uh, uh, these tracings signifies a certain part of our body that uh, have that can display some changes when we are uh, answering questions no so marami po siyang mga tracing na nare-record and all of those tracings are being recorded by each and specified uh, component of the polygraph machine no so actually we have uh, three components ito po yung mga nagre uh, ito po yung mga merong nire-record and we have additional component which is uh, the recording unit kumbaga okay so what are those components the first component is we have the pneumograph. The pneumograph is the one that is being attached into our chest no, and abdomen. Yun po yung tinatawag nating pneumograph. Ano po yung nire-record niya? It records po yung ating breathing pattern. It is uh, believed or actually it is uh, observed that uh, there will be changes into our breathing when we are uh, displaying the so-called specific response. No, kapag po tayo ay medyo kinakabahan, no, uh, dalawa po ang pwedeng mangyari. It could, uh, it could slow down our breathing pattern or it could uh, make it more faster. No, but the notion here is that it displays changes. No, nagkakaroon po tayo ng pagbabago ng ating breathing pattern when we are subjected to uh, a specific type of questions. No. So, yun po yung function ng pneumograph. It records po yung ating breathing pattern. No? Kasi po, uh, syempre, ang nagko-compress at uh, nag -de -de compress usually is uh, yung, yung ating chest kapag po humihinga tayo. No? Uh, in, uh, the, in the process of inhalation and uh, uh, exhale displays uh, a pattern into our body. No? Yun po yung uh, nagko-compress at nag -de depress yung ating uh, chest and also our abdomen so that is what the pneumograph uh, is doing okay and then we have the second component we have there the cardiospemograph no the cardiospemograph records the uh, blood blood pressure it records and measure the blood pressure no yan po yung nilalagay po sa ating kamay no kung maalala nyo po di ba pag uh, nagbbp po tayo meron po silang ginagamit na uh, instrument to measure our blood pressure. Same as with polygraph examination, gumagamit din po sila ng tinatawag natin cardiospemograph, which is the, ang function po niya is it records po yung tinatawag natin uh, blood pressure also the pulse and heart rate as well as the pulse beat. So again, okay so we believe that when a subject tells lie, there will be changes into uh, his blood pressure, there will be changes into his pulse and heart rate, and also onto his heartbeat. No? That is uh, being recorded by the cardiospemograph naman po. The third component is we have here the galvanograph. No? The galvanograph, yan po yung uh, uh, nilalagay po sa ating finger, no? uh, preferably sa ating uh, pointing finger and the ring finger, the index finger and the ring finger, okay? So, ano po yung ginagawa ng galvanograph? It records po yung mga tinatawag nating, uh, it, it records po yung tinatawag nating perspiration. No? Perspiration produced when the subject responds to a stimulus, okay? So, uh, the perspiration is being measured by the so-called skin conductivity, no? So, meron po siyang konting electricity na ina-emit doon po sa ating galvanograph at uh, minimeasure po ng galvanograph yung uh, resistance or yung conductivity ng skin natin to the electricity. So, the more po na pagpawisan tayo, the more po na uh, nag-re-react, uh, kumbaga, uh, the more na nagre-react yung ating uh, skin onto the electricity that is being uh, uh, transferred or being uh, being uh, input into our uh, body. So, yun po yung pinaka-notion niya. Well, alam naman po natin yun, di ba? Na kapag po tayo ay nagsisinungaling and nandun po yung tinatawag nating perspiration, di ba? Pero pinagpapawisan po tayo. So, basically, yun po yung measure ng ating galvanograph. Okay? The skin conductivity to electricity. Okay? So, we have also the last part, no? Sabi ko nga, 
uh, the three major components are pneumograph, cardiospemograph, and galvanograph. And we have additional the chemograph. Ito po yung tinatawag nating recording system or recording unit of the polygraph. Siya po yung nagre-record no, ng uh, uh, different tracings coming from the different parts of our body. No, as being recorded by the, uh, by the aforementioned uh, first three components. No, yun po yung trabaho ng chemograph. The recording system po of the polygraph machine. Okay? So those are the, the uh, four major components of the polygraph machine. No? We have pneumograph, it records the breathing pattern. Cardiospemograph, it records the ble, uh, blood pressure, pulse and heart rate, and the pulse beat. The galvanograph records the skin conductivity to electricity. Okay. Then, let's uh, jump into uh, the next topic, which is the different types of questions being asked during the conduct of polygraph examination. So, we have basically three of them. No? So, uh, meron pang mga karagdagan dyan, depende lang po kung anong uh, template ang ginagamit nila. But, the general classification or types of questions being asked during the conduct of examination are the following. We have the so-called relevant questions, no? Uh, we have also the control, controlled, no, or comparison questions. No? Parehas po yan. Uh, I mean, magka, mag, magkaparehas lang po sila. The control and comparison questions. No? And we have also the so-called irrelevant questions. Okay? So what is all about relevant question? The uh, relevant questions are uh, those questions that are direct and related uh, to the crime being investigated. So, ito po yung mga patungkol mismo doon sa crime na iniimbestigahan. Like for example, the, uh, the crime being uh, investigated is uh, or is yeah, has something to do with robbery, no? So, a, a relevant question would be, no? A question that asks directly if he has uh, he has knowledge, no? Or he has or he did actually committed the crime. Yun po yung relevant. Ito po yung, dito po natin may measure yung tinatawag nating significant response. Pag sinabi po nating significant response, no, uh, if there are changes that occurs into his uh, tracing, physiological tracing, when being asked about relevant question, kapag po nag-react yung ating katawan, no? Uh, nagpakita ng pagbabago sa ating normal tracing pag tinanong po tayo ng relevant question yan po yung isang nagiging basis nila to interpret whether you are lying or not okay so kapag nagreact then they could conclude that they, uh, you are lying no uh, syempre alisin na natin yung mga possibility na merong uh, technical adjustment or merong uh, mga uncontrollable uh, circumstances that could affect the tracing during that time. So, we have also the control and comparison question. Ang control or comparison question are questions that inquires on related but less serious offenses. So, again, we go back to uh, the, the crime being investigated, uh, some uh, assumed crime being investigated, which is robbery, you know? So, what could be a control question or comparison question? So, it's something like, pwede mong tanongin doon, uh, meron, uh, um, meron tayong mga sinusunod na rule in asking comparison question. Like, for example, uh, dapat we, the, the idea behind the control and comparison question is that we are going to get the uh, abnormal tracing of the subject. No? Uh, while trying to secure the abnormal tracing of the subject. Kukunin po natin yung abnormal tracing niya. So, how would we do that? No? Kumbaga, uh, we would put the subject in a situation that he will uh, answer uh, incorrectly. Okay? So, pipili, parang hindi naman po pipilitin. Parang uh, ilalagay po natin siya sa, uh, sa isang situation that uh, probably he would tell a lie. Like, like for example, Robbery is being investigated. So, pwede na po natong tanungin. No? Like, uh, for example, your subject is 21 years old right now. No? When he committed, when, when he allegedly committed the crime. So, pwede po natong tanungin under comparison question or control question is that uh, from the age of uh, 17 um, or no, uh, from the age of 18 
up to 21. Have you ever uh, taken a property that does not belong to you? To you. Okay, so uh, yun po yung pwede nating tanungin. Kumbaga, uh, in that sense, um, he could probably tell uh, that he did not. No? I mean, he could answer no. Okay, in that sense, uh, ang, ang magiging expected uh, uh, result po is he will display a uh, uh, abnormal tracing because that is a very vague and general question. Pero yun po kasi yung idea niya. Na yun po yung point niya. Kumbaga, kung iisipin niya na wala ba akong kinuha or meron ba, uh, the safest answer that he would uh, uh, that, that we will be expecting from him is that he would deny na, na meron siyang kinuha in that span of 3 years. So, kumbaga, na, napilitan po siya na magsabi ng uh, kasinungalingan in that sense. Na, uh, the idea, sabi ko nga kanina, is that we try to secure yung kanyang abnormal tracing. That's why we are uh, constructing the question in that manner. Okay? And we have also the irrelevant question. The irrelevant question, this or question that has nothing to do with the crime being investigated, such as, for example, on his personal profile, no? yung pangalan niya, yung address niya, yun po ay mga patungkol po sa kanyang pagkakakilanlan Pero directly, doon sa crime being investigated, it has nothing to do. Wala siyang connection. Uh, why do we still ask irrelevant question? Bakit pa tayo nagtatanong ng mga irrelevant question if it has nothing to do with the crime being investigated? Well, the idea is that you get the normal tracing of the subject. No? Para makuha po natin yung normal tracing niya. Kasi, how would we know if the subject is displaying normal or abnormal tracing if we don't know his normal tracing and abnormal tracing? That's the idea. Da? Kaya meron tayong irrelevant question because we wanted to set a base baseline. Da? Kailangan nating malaman kung ano ba yung kanyang normal tracing. Da? And the, uh, the reason also we have the control question is that uh, we are trying to set a baseline for abnormal responses. Now, when we ask the relevant questions, doon na po natin malalaman uh, kung nag-display po siya ng uh, abnormal tracing or normal tracing compared if we are going to compare his response to the previously known response of the subject. No? So, kumbaga, we are going to compare the response that he displayed on the comparison question and irrelevant question. Kapag po nagtugma yung sagot niya, no, yung response niya sa relevant question doon sa irrelevant question, meaning that he is uh, not lying. Pero kapag po nagtugma no, yung response niya doon sa relevant question sa comparison question, it means that the subject is lying. Okay? So, those are the different types of question being asked during the conduct of polygraph examination. Now, we have here the different types of polygraph tests. No? I just included three of them. Ito yung pinaka-common po ngayon. No? We have the general question test or GQT na tinatawag. No? We have the peak of tension test and we have the zone comparison test. Okay? So, sa general question test po, ito po yung common na ginagamit natin in the conduct of polygraph examination. It's a combination of relevant, irrelevant, and comparison question. No? Uh, pinagsama-sama po ito, they are arranged in a strategic manner uh, for us to be able to observe yung tinatawag natin significant response of the subject. Okay? So when we are using a combination of relevant, irrelevant, and comparison question, ang ginagawa po natin type of polygraph test is the so-called GQT, no? general question test. Uh, some other references, tinatawag po nila itong MGQT no? or the mix general question test. No? But uh, nevertheless, press lang po sila ng kahulugan. Uh, the other type of uh, polygraph test is the so-called peak of tension test no? or PTT. No? The, uh, this is used when uh, the detail about the crime being investigated is not yet fully, uh, it's not yet widely publicized. So, kumbaga, hindi pa po siya uh, known to the public at ang nakakaalam lang po ng mga important or significant details about the crime is the uh, the, the examiner himself no the investigator himself uh, the investigator and the examiner himself themselves no and also the criminal 
no? the, the subject being put uh, into investigation or put into the polygraph examination. Kasi we're expecting po that uh, uh, since hindi pa siya widely publicized, ang magre-react lang po doon sa mga relevant questions being asked under the peak of tension test will only be the the one who committed the crime. No? So yun po yung idea niya. Kaya po natin or uh, pag tayo po ay gagamit ng peak of tension test. Okay? Then the third one is the zone comparison test. Well, sa zone comparison test, no? Uh, generally, this is uh, same concept po sa ating general question test Pero dito po ay gumagamit tayo ng tinatawag nating zone no? uh, That will be represented by the different colors Okay, So basically, we have red, we have green, and we have black Doon po sa ating zone comparison test no? Ang red, no? uh, meron po tayo doon tinatawag na red zone Nandun po nakapaloob yung mga relevant questions no? Sa green zone po, nandun po yung mga na nakapaloob yung mga controlled questions at sa black zone no or in other uh, polygraph uh, machine they are using the so called gray gray zone no doon po nakapaloob yung mga irrelevant question so the expectation is that he would respond more doon sa red zone which are yung mga tinatanong po kasi doon ay mga uh, mga relevant questions no so uh, he would display also abnormal tracing doon sa green zone kapa kasi po ang uh, uh, nakapaloob po doon is yung mga controlled question and normal tracing po sa black or gray zone da? so kapag po nagkaroon tayo ng significant response doon sa red zone it means that or it could mean that the subject is lying depending upon the circumstances of the polygraph examination da? so yun po yung mga uh, some of the polygraph tests that are being conducted in the modern uh, polygraph uh, machine that we have uh, today okay then lastly no let's talk about the phases of polygraph testing or yung point in the nating uh, the process no of polygraph testing so we have four no uh, we have four phases no phase one initial interview phase two pre-interview phase three we have the conduct of the instrumental test or the actual examination and we have phase four the post test interview okay so first phase under initial interview no ito po ay nangyayari between the investigator and the uh, examiner okay so basically uh, wala pong kaalam-alam sa examiner about the facts of the case unless uh, everything will be divulged by the investigator kaya nga it's necessary that we uh, that the polygraph examiner should have or should conduct in uh, an initial interview to the person who will be requesting the conduct of polygraph examination no uh, hihingi niya po yung mga pertinent details, yung mga kinakailangan pong mga detalye, no? especially about uh, especially about the information on the crime being committed or being uh, had been that had been committed or the facts of the case being investigated, no? Kailangan po niyan tanungin lahat 'yun kasi it's hard to determine what is the truth if hindi mo naman alam. Uh, I mean, it's hard to determine whether uh, the person you are talking to is lying kung ikaw mismo hindi mo alam yung mga yung tungkol doon sa uh, crime na iniimbestigahan mo you cannot basically tell the truth if you uh, you cannot basically tell if the person is lying if you don't know the truth that's the that's the idea da? so that's why it's very important that we should have the initial interview okay then the pre-interview this happens between uh, the examiner and the subject no so, dito na po magkakaroon tayo ng initial contact, magkakausap, magkakaharap na po si examiner, tsaka po si uh, subject ng polygraph examination. Uh, mga ginagawa po dito, briefing, no? uh, de determining the subject uh, suitability to undergo polygraph testing, no? titignan po kung suitable po siya, baka po may sakit siya, no? and something like that. Dito rin po sasabihin yung kanyang mga karapatan under our law, no, and under our constitution, everything will be brief no, uh, on the subject. No? And also, the waiver, no, may pipermahan po siya dyan. Uh, ipapaliwanag din po yung uh, polygraph test kung paano po gagawin. No? Then, uh, what, the, 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 the preparation uh, for the actual uh, conduct of test usually happens during the pre-interview. No? Kumbaga, sinaset mo na po yung tone dito. Na kumbaga, 
uh, we will be conducting a polygraph test. No? This will, uh, what will happen is like this. Ganito po yung mangyari. Ganito po yung process. No? Uh, ganito po yung gagawin natin. Something like that. That is being done under pre-interview. Okay? So, on the conduct of polygraph test, no, dyan na po tayo magkakandak or magtatanong. No? Doon na po natin itetest yung subject po natin. Uh, doon na po natin i-attach yung ating uh, yung yung different parts of the polygraph machine no uh, and we will conduct questioning no in that uh, we will conduct the actual questioning during that phase okay so when the polygraph machine was already turned off no pag off mo na po ng uh, polygraph machine uh, that is the end of the phase 3 no and post test interview or the phase phase 4 will commence no so post test interview uh, you will uh, be clarifying no uh, the uh, uh, some of the, the responses no kumbaga you are doubtful no uh, you are going to uh, explain to him the result of the conduct of the polygraph examination no and preferably you know kasi alam naman po natin that polygraph uh, uh, the, the result of polygraph examination is not yet widely uh, acceptable in our courts no hindi pa po siya masyadong uh, tinatanggap no due to some reason so preferably under the process interview is that we could uh, try to secure the so called confession or admission kasi uh, sa confession or admission po yun po yung mga pwede nating gamitin sa korte pero yung result medyo hindi pa po siya ganun ka widely accepted so uh, it's part also of the post test interview that uh, we try to secure uh, the so called confession or admission because that's the best uh, thing that you could uh, you could use uh, in relation to polygraph testing kapag po nagconfess siya inamin niya po uh, yung uh, kanyang uh, guilt no? then uh, yun yung pwede nating gamitin no magiging substantial na lang kumbaga yung result ng polygraph examination okay so basically, that's the process of the polygraph testing and that is all about the forensic lie detection techniques. Now, I hope you learned something from this lecture. Uh, if you have questions, please comment down in the comment section. That's it for today. See you guys in the next lecture. Bye-bye.